Okay, now let's work on an example where we put a little more financial context on the problem. Uh, so here we're going to set up a company and we want to see, um, we want to use our cash flow from assets identity, our free cash flow identity, uh, to try and uh, get a more holistic picture of how the firm is operating. Uh, so we've got our firm Jetson Space Spacecraft Corporation. They're showing the following information on their 2011 income statement. They have sales of 235,000, costs of 141,000. They've got some other expenses of 7,900, depreciation expense of 17,300. They've got interest expense and taxes of 12,900 and 19,565 respectively. And then they pay dividends to their existing shareholders of 12,300. In addition, we know that the firm has issued, that means sold, $6,100 in new equity during 2011. Okay, so issuing shares uh, or issuing debt uh, is the way in, in financial terms, that's how we say that we've sold, the company has sold that to investors. Uh, and redeemed 4,500 in outstanding long-term debt. Again, we've got some terminology here. Redeeming long-term debt, redeeming any kind of debt uh, means that we've paid it back. So we've redeemed those notes. Uh, and, and when we go into the debt chapter, we'll talk about what that actually means, where those terms come from. Uh, and then outstanding simply in, in the financial world simply means that we uh, th this is currently existing. Right? So outstanding debt means it's debt that we already have. Outstanding shares means it's shares that someone has bought. Uh, so we have sold new equity shares, but we have paid off some old debt. That's what that's what this says here. And then we have net fixed assets at the beginning of the year of 50,000 and then net fixed assets at the end of the year of 75,000. So clearly we have uh, bought some new fixed assets. Uh, and the uh, question here is a little bit different. Uh, not, we don't want to just prove the identity. We want to use our knowledge of the identity to solve for the change in networking capital that must have happened. Okay. Uh, so we start by, or at least I like to start by pulling some of the relevant information out of the word problem <clears throat> and into some simple accounting statements. So a simple income statement right, with sales at the top. So sales or revenue. Here our sales is 235,000. Sales minus costs, always the next. And here we have two costs. We have simple costs, and then we have other expenses. And both of those are just gonna be separate line items, other expenses, but they are both just general costs that the firm is incurring. 141,000 costs, other expenses of 7,900. Minus depreciation, that's our next line item. Depreciation expense here of 17,300. That gives us EBIT. And that's really all we need to start. EBIT uh, here, if we do all our algebra correctly, will be 68,800. So we can use that to uh, start solving for some of the things in our identity. Right? Remember, our, our identity here is going to be operating cash flow minus net capital spending minus the change in networking capital has to be equal to cash flow to creditors plus cash flow to uh, equity holders. So we want to solve for the change in networking capital. That means we need the other four pieces of the of the equation. So our operating cash flow, we can start there. Operating cash flow is EBIT plus depreciation minus taxes. Remember that this is just the money left over from the firm's normal operations, the cash left over from the firm's normal operations. So EBIT we solved for 68,800. Depreciation and taxes are both given in the problem. Depreciation of 17,300 uh, minus taxes of 19,565. That gives us operating cash flow of 66,535. Then we can uh, just jump right into our cash flow to credit. Cash flow to creditors here is uh, interest expense minus net new debt. And we're given our interest expense of 12,900. 
And then our net due debt is our ending long-term debt minus our beginning long-term debt. And the problem here is not uh, outright, doesn't tell us what those two values are. Instead, what it tells us is that the firm redeemed $4,500 in outstanding debt. And this means it paid off $4,500 in old loans. Right? And so it actually tells us what the value is here. It says that our ending long-term debt is $4,500 less than our beginning long-term debt because we paid it off. Right? So that means our beginning debt must have been higher than our ending debt. And so if that's true, if our beginning debt is greater than our ending debt, then this value must be a negative, negative 4,500. Now I can just do my algebra here. T interest minus a negative uh, change is a, a positive. So we do algebra correctly and we get 17,400 is our cash flow to credit. Cash flow to equity, again, pretty similar idea. This is the dividends paid minus any net new equity. And here we're going to have the opposite effect. We pay dividends out to our existing shareholders of 12,300 uh, minus any change in owner's equity. Right? And so this is our ending common shares uh, or owner's equity here. Uh, minus our beginning common shares or owner's equity. And what the problem again tells us directly that the firm issued 6,100 in new equity. And that means it sold additional shares. So it raised money. And what that means is that our ending owner's equity has got to be more than our beginning owner's equity because we sold additional shares. So if that's true, if our ending is greater than our beginning, then we have a positive value here because we sold 6,100 in new shares. So we have 12,300 minus 6,100 gives us cash flow to equity of 6,200. And certainly we're on the right track here. We solved for cash flow from assets from one side, from the investor's perspective, the cash flow to credit plus cash flow to equity side is cash flow from assets. And uh, that is uh, 17,400 is our cash flow to credit. 6,200 is our cash flow to equity. That give, must give us cash flow from assets of 23,600. Okay. So, that's three uh, of our four items here from the identity. We just need to solve for net capital spending and we can figure out the fifth, the missing, the change in networking capital. Net capital spending is my ending fixed assets minus my beginning fixed assets plus my depreciation expense. Uh, and again, now these are all given in the problem. Ending fixed assets is 75,000 minus beginning fixed assets of 50,000 plus depreciation expense of 17,300. Uh, and do our algebra correctly here and we get that we must have made an additional investment, oh, sorry, of 42,300 in fixed assets. So now we can use the identity and these four things that we just solved for to figure out what the change in networking capital must have been. So our cash flow to credit plus cash flow to equity has to be equal to operating cash flow minus net capital spending minus the change in networking capital. Uh, and so these two things is 23,600 operating cash flow of 66,535 minus net capital spending of 42,300. And now we just have one unknown, one equation and one unknown, the change in networking capital. We do some rearranging and we do our algebra correctly and we get that the change in networking capital has to be equal to $635.